Hi everyone. Late 70s was a very creative time for the Stranglers, especially their two frontmen, JJ Burnell and Hugh Cornwell. They both put out solo product. JJ put out an album called You're a Man Cometh um, and a single called Freddie Laker. You're a Man Cometh was a very, very different LP. Um, it had more in the way of ideas rather than, in my humble opinion, songs. It was basically like a soundscape album, I think. JJ even brought in his um, Triumph Bonneville and just let it tick over as the, the backing track to, or a large part of the backing track to one of the songs. So yeah, it was a very expressive, creative album, but very different to the strength of output. Hugh teamed up with Robert Williams and um, he put an album out called Nos, or rather they put an album out called Nosferatu, sort of vampire. And the first single from Nosferatu, which I think actually was the only single from Nosferatu, was White Room, which is a, a cover of one of Cream's biggest hits, or most well-known songs at the very least. Uh, this is it. And it is superb absolutely superb the b-side was a a track from the album but it was just the instrumental version losers in a lost land and thank goodness at the time i did a needle drop of that for my own personal enjoyment because that uh, b-side has never come out it's never been re-released I and mean, i think it's superb even without vocals it's a great track but white room in particular um what an incredible version or Cream's track. It is um, quite true to the original, but with a little bit more oomph to it, shall we say, a little bit more of that solid guitar that he's known for. And the way he sings it is, is superb. Um, it's not quite anything like the Stranglers did at all. It, it is very good. Personally, it's my favorite Stranglers solo output. Um, although I do like JJ's album, Hughes, I think, has gone, has raised the bar a little bit, relying on on craftsmanship for the songs and not sound effects. Uh, although Freddie Laker was superb, even over JJ's distorted vocals. Hugh just upped the ante, I think, and I'm sure as the next 10 years rolled by, I'm pretty sure he had in his mind I can make it as a front man on my own uh, which is something I don't think JJ could have done which has kind of borne that out because he's still with the Stranglers whereas um, he's been gone for 30 years now anyway back to White Room um, let me get this out of here show you the label Ooh, let's turn that round the right way. As I keep saying, uh, it's my favourite Stranglers solo track. And it. What else could you have released from Nosferatu? Um, I think this is obviously the standout track to be released as a as a forty five. Um, I'm waffling now, I just needed to, to get this out there because I've been concentrating solely on the Stranglers whereas the solo output is um, amazing and obviously Hugh dabbled uh, away from the punk imagery for his solo output I mean here he's wearing sort of like very baggy trousers whereas in the Stranglers he would be you know black drain pipes, black jeans you know, white t-shirt, more than likely. But here, he's just trying to just break the image a little bit. So if you get a chance, uh, you can probably pick this up, up on Discogs for a couple of pounds, I should think. But, oh, get it. Add it to your arsenal of favourite songs. It really is superb. So on that note, and very short video, I um, just feel like I needed to get this out here, you know? Um, enjoy. Mm.
fantastic solo single from Hugh Cornwell. Unfortunately, I will say that after the Nosferatu album, he tended to go downhill on solo output. You know, he's never really recaptured that that moment. So, anyhow, uh, thanks for watching, and I shall catch you on the next one. Bye for now.